Hi, welcome to Prophetic Utterance. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. It's a pleasure to be back, amen, to bring forth some teaching tonight in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yay, we're going to do some teaching in the third watch. We are in the third watch, amen, and we're going to do some teaching concerning how your prayers should be answered or can be answered, right? Understanding the spiritual laws of answered prayers. And many of us need our prayers answered, but we also need to stay in a place of security where we are, where we are secured in our prayer, where we will be able to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, where we can begin to confess that God is our refuge. Amen. God is our protector. God will keep us safety. Amen keep us in safety so let us learn how to pray and let's learn how to abide in the word of God let us learn how to be humble how to confess how to ask how to believe and how to agree amen we need to learn how to agree with God's word and most of all how to persevere that's right we all need to persevere in the word of God Amen. We cannot let our heart be troubled. We must learn how to speak God's word and stay in that position. Because sometimes we will have trouble. Amen. Hearing God. But that doesn't mean God isn't speaking to you and he's not speaking to me. So we bless God for you at this hour in the third watch as we command the midnight hour, as we command the breaker anointing upon your lives amen that's right the breaker anointing fresh fire holy ghost fire upon your lives in the name of jesus we pray amen so let's enter into some worship and after the worship we will go into the teaching god bless you
Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I had to, I had to find that worship. I mean, it's been a while since I heard that song. It's called Refuge and it's um, written by one of my uh, friends, uh, Rodney Williams, minstrel prophet Rodney Williams, featuring Catherine Summers. I mean, it's such a blessing to have found that because it's been a while since I played this song. And it's so important to understand that God is our refuge. I mean, God is our hiding place. God is our rock. I mean, he is the foundation of our lives. This is where we pray from. This is the place where we worship. This is the place where we give honor. This is where we have our breakthrough. This is where we yield ourselves, yield our members or anything that is um, trying to have victory over us. But we have to Always remember, Father is our hiding place. He is our rock. Amen. It's there where we go, where we abide. Amen. It's there where we get our peace, our love, our strength from Him. Amen. We can't lean upon our own understanding. We have to trust in the Lord. Amen. We have to trust Him to lead us in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I praise God for that worship. And I hope, you know, you enjoyed it in the name of Jesus. So I want to talk about the weapons of war and prayer and intercession. I'm coming from the book that was written by my apostle and my mentor and someone who I work daily with in ministry. Amen. Full time ministry. And his name is Apostle Kevin Bailey. And the name of the book is Rediscovering Spiritual Warfare. Amen. And you can find this book on Amazon. You can find it in Books A Million, Target. You can find it online. But this is a good book and it's going to help a lot of people to really begin to understand how to pray and how to gain uh, legal ground back into your life again. Because many of times we don't realize that there are legal curses that the enemy operates in. Amen. When we don't renounce, when we don't denounce, when we don't disown, reject and divorce the sin in our lives, they become legal curses. And that means the enemy has legal rights to come in, to trespass, to harass us, to torment us. Amen. To cause trials and tribulations in our lives. And so we must learn to understand the will of the father learn to understand we have to learn we have to press forward into those things and begin to read the word of God and understand how to be strategic with the promises of God amen and not allow ourselves to be held in bondage amen with sin especially dealing with unconfessed sin and generational sins curses that was handed down do our lineage so father wants you to know amen in his word isaiah 65 verse 24 it shall come to pass that before they call i will answer and while they are still speaking i will hear amen isaiah 65 verse 24 call to me and i will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know Jeremiah 33 verse 3 Therefore I say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them Mark chapter 11 verse 24 Amen Praise God We have we have established that in preparing for spiritual warfare 
We have to establish our foundation in spiritual warfare. We have to have the word of God. Amen. Because having the word of God, knowing the word of God, and studying and meditating with the word of God helps us to have a solid foundation. Amen. And when we have a solid foundation, we will know how to fight. Amen. Stand and fight in the name of Jesus Christ. But if we don't have the foundation and our foundation is not built upon the word of God, this is how the enemy has legal rights and access to you and to me. Amen. Especially like right now during the third watch from 12 to 3. This is where the warfare is. This is where the witchcraft is. This is where the assignments are being fulfilled while we sleep. This is the time where they come in and they sow seeds of discord. Whatever the assignment is, that's what the enemy does. Amen. And then from 3 to 6 p.m. This is when the enemy is robbing us. Amen. This is when he's uh, assaulting us in our dreams. And this is where we have spiritual warfare. Where we have to fight in our dreams. Amen. Against those demonic unclean spirits. Against familiar spirits in our dreams. And we have to have victory. And secure our victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So prayer is talking to God. Prayer is alerting God to your knees or the knees of those around you through your own confession. Prayer is about engaging with Father. Prayer is the way that we deal with with the enemy. Amen. We want God to show up and demonstrate. Amen. What he is going to do, not just in our lives personally, but in the affairs of within our communities within our inner government whatever the situation is but we need God to demonstrate himself and we need to have faith amen and reliance on him and no other we cannot serve two gods we cannot have more than one God we have to trust and believe in the purposes of God and know that God is making a way out of no way but it's going to require us to be frequent in our prayer life we have to be frequent we got to make our requests be made known we got to call upon the God upon God we have to ask God to come in we have to give him an invitation you know when I'm doing deliverance with people one of the things that I always do with them I ask them to invite the Holy Spirit give the Holy Spirit permission to enter in the battle with you because many of times people go into the battle they don't have on the whole armor of god they don't give an invitation to the holy spirit yeah i understand the scripture says uh yea though you walk through the valley of shadow of death i shall be with you thy, thy rod and thy staff comforts you yeah i do understand the word of god said he will never leave us nor forsake us but at the same time we still have to give an invitation to the holy spirit to come into the areas where we need help Because he is our helper. And most of all, he is our comforter. And the Holy Spirit wants us to teach, wants to teach us. This is how we be, how we begin to mature spiritually. This is how we become stronger in the word of God. So when the enemy comes in, we, we will know how to make our requests. We will know how to reverence the Lord God with our petitions. Amen. So we have to call upon the Holy Spirit. We must send forth the invitation to the Holy Spirit in order for you and I to have victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. And many of you may not even understand what the victory is, but the victory is when Jesus Christ died on the cross. The victory is when Jesus died on the cross and overcame Satan. And you have to learn to secure your victory by overcoming With the word of your testimony, your testimony will make room for you. You need to change your confession. A lot of times I hear people tearing themselves down through their own words. Their word curses, they speak over their life. And are quickly to accuse Satan when things are not going right. But Satan is not always the problem. You are the problem. And Satan, he is a symptom of the problem. And the problem is, is that you're not standing in one accord, in agreement with God's word consistently. And this is how our prayers can be hindered. Amen. We have to make our confession and make it boldly at the throne of grace. Amen. We have to have confidence. For the word of God says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, 
through verse 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So it's going into the courts, right? The courts of heaven. You bring your petitions unto God and you're asking him according to the petitions. You're asking him. Amen. And anything you ask according to his will, he hears us. But you got to ask according to his will. Not my will, your will, or anybody else's will, but our Father's will. When we petition God for peace, we speak the word of God that is connected to peace. Peace I give, this peace I leave with you. And it says, the peace of God, amen, brings understanding. So when there's opposition with confusion, anger, or resentment, any arguments, slandering, backbiting, gossiping. You rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then you release the word of God by bringing your petition to Abba Father to bring peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. But you now, now this is the confidence. And that's the key thing. You got to have confidence in God's word. You cannot be unstable in your ways. You can't keep going back and forth, being unstable, being double-minded. You have to make a decision to want to be confident in God's word and his pro- and His promises. For the word of God says in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And that's something I keep saying. God's, your prayers and my prayers, for anyone that is effective, you know, who knows how to pray and pray with with a prayer of consistency, knows how to pray according to the word of God, their prayers will avail. If I die today and I pray in right and, and I pray with the righteousness of God, with the word of God, guess what? The prayers are effective. They are fervent. They avail. I mean, the prayers don't stop. I mean, because I'm no longer in the earth realm, doesn't mean my prayers stop. My earth is still ascending from the earth into the heavens. Amen. And it's going to take warfare. Many of you have not been prepared to understand what warfare is. Amen. But now is the time to understand. Now is the time to spend more and more time in the word of God because everything around us is changing and it's happening real quick. Amen. And there's no time to be hanging around. Amen. And then when the time comes, you're going to be like those 10 virgins. Five was wise and five were foolish. The five were already ahead because they had oil in their lamp. But the other five, they say, wait on us. We got to go to the market. We got to go buy our oil. No, no, no. Get ready. Be prepared to fight the battle of God. No one's going to be waiting for anyone to get caught up. This is the time we have to get caught up with God's promises to understand Father's word. Amen. But we cannot allow ourselves to be distracted. We must direct our prayers to heaven. Amen. We must subject our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions to God. Amen. So Father God can take residence in our lives through the power of his Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. How else can you prevail in your prayer life? How else can your prayers be answered in the mighty name of Jesus? Amen. To abide means to reside in. We must abide. We must reside. We must remain in the word of God. We must be able to comply to the will of the Father. We must be able to allow the word to indwell in us. Amen. Because this is the only way our prayers will take seniority over the things that the enemy is doing against us against you in the name of Jesus but it requires us to spend time with God to meet him in that secret place do you have a secret place do you have a place where you can enter in do you have a room where you can shut the door and spend time with Jehovah God amen 
abide amen for the word of god says in john 15 verse 7 if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire amen and it shall be done for you and that's the key thing you have to abide in the word of god when you are asking but what if you're not abiding what if you're not abiding in the word of God? What if you're not asking according to his will? These things will hinder your prayer life. And it's going to require you to purge yourself from iniquity. It's going to require you and me to repent, to renounce, to fall out of agreement with the cares of this world. And pull on the whole armor of God so that we will be able to withstand the enemy, withstand the assignments of the enemy. But what if you're not abiding? What if you're not that person that prays, pray with righteousness? What if you're you're that person who don't pray fervent prayers? What if you're that person whose prayers do not avail if much? What do you expect? Well, you know deep down in your heart you're not abiding in the tree of life, where you could begin to produce fruit. Good fruits in the name of Jesus. And then when you pray and you ask, your prayers will be answered. Your desires will be fulfilled. Amen. But you got to keep abiding in the word of God. This is where your freedom is. This is where your freedom and your joy will be when you continually abide in the will of the Father and speak his word. But when you allow pride to come into your heart, to hinder you, to block you from worshiping God, to block you from doing the things that Abba Father has for you and your household. Your prayers will be hindered. Your prayers will be hindered. Amen. So the word of God says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That's right, exalt you. 1 Peter 5, 6, God wants to exalt you, but you got to be humble and start wanting people to exalt you. Start wanting people to do things for you when you think you deserve it. That's pride. And that's a cycle in many of our lives that needs to be cut severe, disconnected from in our lives. Always exalting yourself over everything and everybody. You're prideful. And God is the one that humbles us. God tells us that we are to resist the devil. Amen. We have to get down on our knees and do battle. Amen. In order to resist the devil. Amen. In order for us to draw nigh unto God. But it's going to require your submission. And it's going to require your confession. Not, not, not any kind of confession. But confession that's going to unlock the door. For you to continue in the place of intimacy. Amen. So I hope this is helping you. I hope that you will begin to understand the power of your prayer life. Begin to believe and agree. And stand in right place. Stand in right standing with God. Right standing. That means be in righteousness. Be holy. Be acceptable unto the King of Kings. Amen. So that our Father himself will be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. But you got to have faith. Faith to believe. Faith to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, have faith. And I'm your host, Jacqueline King. And I'm going to close this up with worship. Amen. And and we thank God for this watch. Amen. It, this, this, is, this can be the most challenging time for me to teach. Because... The, of the timing and and I have to be very strategic when I come on and teach at this hour of the morning but it's about breaking every assignment of witchcraft every assignment of astral projected spirits every assignment of demonic interference by having a spiritual spouse having a spirit husband a spirit wife that comes in and sexually molests you you got to make time for God at certain times of the hours to break the assignments of the wicked one 
in the name of Jesus Christ and shut down the doors and seal down every gate, every portal that has been opened and seal it up with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So during this time, I, I have a tendency of stumbling, but I want to press into God and just begin to pray. But the way I pray, you know, <laughs> hey, there's times I just want to flow in the spirit, just begin to flow and speak in the spirit. Amen. But because I'm teaching you, I mean, I had to be very strategic in how I pray so that you, the listener, will begin to understand. Amen. So let's just quickly pray. And after I pray, uh, we're going to um, go into worship. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Father, for this hour. Thank you for this morning, God. As we command the day, command the midnight hour. As we command the breaker anointing upon our lives, we command the morning, God. Yea, God, we praise you, Father God, for the fulfillment of your promises in our lives this day, Father God. Lord, Father God, we thank you for the increase and double portion of wisdom, revelation, Father God. We can have the information, but we need the revelation, Father God. Information is good, but no revelation is not going to help us. So whoever you are, wherever you are, man of God, woman of God, children of God, you need more revelation of God's will for your lives in Jesus name and I pray that word over you that you will have more revelation with all you're getting get understanding because wisdom is the principal thing and I pray that you will have wisdom and in order for you to have wisdom you have to have the knowledge of God and so we pray that you will have knowledge revelation and understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yea, God, we bless your name, Father God, because you are the Lord of our salvation. Yea, God, you are the lifter and the covering of our heads in a day of battle. Father, we thank you for the whole armor of God and we put on the whole armor of God and we do not entangle ourselves with the affairs of this world. Amen. Because we are about our Father's business. Yea, God, we counsel every demonic attack at this hour. We counsel every satanic ritual at this hour we bind up all satanic rituals and assignments that is on its way now we bind them up from the north from the east from the west from the south from the four corners of the earth we release the angels of god we charge the angels of god to go now and locate the enemy amen and bring destruction to the enemy's camps in the name of jesus yea god we bless you father god in the mighty name of jesus we worship you father for your word say worship you in spirit and in truth so father help us to recognize our defaults in character help us to see who we are in your eyes help us father god because your word says therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus yea god no condemnation so we thank you for the holy spirit we thank you for the power of conviction we thank you for deliverance is our portion yea god deliverance is the children's bread and i thank you father god that jesus christ is the bread of life and i receive it whoever you are begin to say i receive the bread of life in the mighty name of jesus i receive fresh fire holy ghost fire in my life right now in the name of jesus christ and lord we praise you for deliverance we thank you father god that you surround us with songs of deliverance you surround us and keep us and you cover us father god because you are the bread of heaven you are the bread of life father god in the name of jesus christ and father forgive us for our unrighteousness forgive us for anything that we have done that has grieved your heart in the name of Jesus Christ, as we bless you at this hour, as we honor you at this hour, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we submit ourselves to you, Father God, because you are the part of Father God, make us over again, Father, in the name of Jesus, make us over again, Father, in the name of Jesus, God bless you, and I'm your host, Jacqueline King, Prophetic Utterance. I pray this prayer will help you and, and the teacher. Amen. So let's go into worship. You saw this 
Go with me. 